Hey kids, welcome to CIPC Kids Church. I'm so glad that you decided to join me this morning. Now, today we begin our series of lessons on the Ten Commandments. I know you guys are so excited. But first, let me ask you a question. Who is God? Think about it for a minute. Good. God is the one who made you and he made me. He loves us so much that he gave us rules to follow to help keep us safe and to protect us. That's what we're going to be learning about. A long time ago, God gave Moses and the Israelites 10 commandments. Remember, they were written on tablets of stone by the finger of God. Can you all count to 10 of me? Because that's how many commandments we're going to be learning over the next several weeks. You ready? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And the first four commandments, one, two, three, four, have to do with our relationship with God. And today we'll cover commandment one. Okay, but first let's talk about rules. Why are rules important? And what is a rule? Can you tell me? Right, rules are directions that we are given so that we make good choices. Okay, they help protect us. They help keep us safe. So, let's just talk about traffic rules today. You know, traffic rules are when you drive a car, when you're out in a car, or you're walking on the street and you're around cars. If you have any toy cars, you go get them for me, okay? And you can help me act out these rules. Or if you don't have a car, you can just pretend you're driving one while we're doing these um, traffic rules. Okay, so what is this? This, ah, this is a traffic stoplight. What does it mean? What does it, when you're driving down the road and you see one of these, they're usually up high and they're at the intersections where people are crossing and they have a red light, a yellow light, and a green light. What's the red light mean? Right, stop. What's the yellow light mean? Slow down. What's the green light mean? Right, go. Okay, it's very important to have stoplights. Because if we don't, people don't know when to stop, to slow down, or to go. So let's look at my cars, and let's act that out. Okay, so if the cars are going, and they see a red light, he has to stop. If he doesn't stop, and another car is turning, and he keeps going, we can have a crash. Okay, when the red light says stop, you must stop. When the green light says go, you must go. Okay. Let's look at another traffic symbol. The, the stoplight is to help keep us safe on the road. Okay, what's this one? Can you read that? It says one way. Okay, Miss Carol did this one time. She went down a road that said one way. And you know what? None of the cars were going the same way as me. And that was very dangerous. I had to stop and turn around. So let's look an example. Okay, so this is the one way. You're supposed to go this way only. If another car is coming and going this way, what happens? We can have a crash. So if you're going the wrong way, you got to stop and turn around and go the right way. Okay, why do we have that rule? Because when you're driving, you can't go the wrong way on the road or you can get hurt. It's to protect you. Okay, what's this? Everybody's seen this one. What is that? It's a stop sign. And what does that mean? Stop. It means don't keep going. Stop. If you don't stop, maybe you'll run into something. If you don't stop, maybe you'll hit another car. So when you see the stop sign, you stop. If you don't stop, then what can happen? A crash. Okay, you have to stop when you're driving a car and you see a stop sign. Now, why does the city or the government give us all these traffic symbols? Like I told you before, to keep you safe while you're driving on the road. 
Well, sometimes we have rules in our homes, in our everyday lives, in our families um, that your parents or your teachers give you in school so that to keep you safe, to protect you, to let you know they love you. So let's look at a couple rules in our families or in our schools that we have to obey. Okay, one, what does this say? Hat, don't touch. Okay, so on your stove, there those burners when that you cook your food on, when you turn them on, if you touch them while they're hot, you can burn your hand. My little girl Sarah, one time she did that. There was a heater, sort of like a stove, and she touched it and she burned her hand very bad. We had to take her to the hospital and she had to have her hand wrapped up for months. So when your parents say, hot, don't touch, don't touch it. Your parents are telling you that to keep you safe. Okay, here's one that kind of goes with our traffic rules. Don't go in the street. Why does your mom or your teachers tell you not to go in the street? Because there's cars driving quickly. They won't, don't want you to get hit by a car. They're trying to show you they love you, to protect you, to take care of you. Okay, here's another one. Ooh, can you read that? Don't play with fire. Okay, here's a candle. It is fire. I lit those candles and it is burning <gasps> hot. Don't touch, it's hot. But what if I'm sitting around and I just wanna do, you know, sometimes you do stupid things and I were to put this paper in the fire. What could happen? My paper could catch on fire. It could drop onto the ground, burn the carpet, cause a big mess. The fire department would have to come. Don't play with fire. Fire looks enticing because it's brightly colored. But don't play with fire. It's dangerous. Your parents and your teachers, adults tell you don't play with fire to keep you safe, to keep the family safe. Okay? Now, last one. I think I have one more. Wear your seatbelt. That is a little belt that's in the car. And when you're driving in the car, you're supposed to strap that seatbelt on. Now, I know lots of people in Morocco who are not wearing their seatbelts. And it's very dangerous because if the car stops suddenly, whoosh, you could go flying. So please, whenever you're in the car, even if your mom or dad or if the taxi driver doesn't say anything, put your seatbelt on. Okay? Those rules... That guidance, wearing your seatbelt, don't play a fire, stop when you're in the street, um, hold your mom's hand when you're crossing the road. Those are all rules given to you by your parents and teachers to protect you, to show you how much they love you. And that's the same thing God did when he gave us the commandments. He wanted us to have special rules for living so that we could have the best life possible, okay? God loves us. He wants us to be safe. So it's important that we know and understand the rules he gives us. Now, before we get into our lesson on the first commandment, which is put God first. Before we start learning about that, Gabriel, he's in our kids church class and has helped me in many lessons. He made up his very own song that he's going to sing to you. And it talks about how much God loves you, and how he wants to protect you. So it fits in perfect with our lesson. So kids, enjoy listening to Gabriel. And if you have a song you'd like to make up and sing to me, or a poem, or anything about the Ten Commandments, feel free to video it and send it to my email. Okay? Okay, guys, enjoy Gabriel. I have a song for you, uh, Miss Carol, for the Sunday school lesson, of course, because you asked me, of course. Uh, God loves you whenever you call. He protects you. He protects you. Everybody, me and you. Me and you. He loves you in... He loves you. He loves you. Okay, kids, wasn't that such a sweet video by Gabriel? I am so glad he made that for me. And you can make one for me, too. 
Now, who remembers what I told you was the very first commandment that we'll be learning about? You're right. You guys are listening so good. Here, let me get it for us. Put God first. Put God first. That is our first commandment. Now, what does that mean to put God first? That means to love God more than any other thing you have, more than any other thing you like to do, to love God the most. And we're going to do a little object lesson about that to help you understand. Okay. Now, here is a little ping pong ball. This ping pong ball represents God. And I'm going to put him in my jar first because God is the most important. I want God to be the first thing I think about, the first that I love, okay? God is the most important. So I'm putting God in my jar. Now I have a, bat, a, a cup of rice. This rice, of course, y'all like to eat rice, but today it represents all the other things we like to do or all the other things that are in our life, okay? It can be um, important things or not so important things. School, sports, reading books, um, all sorts of things. Anything in your life that you do or that you um, watch or see or anything in your life. So look, I'm going to pour these things, all these other things, in my cup too. Now look, if I put God first in my life, the rice settles in there and it's all snugly cozy because we have God first, okay? We put God in first. Now, let's do this again, all right? Here's another cup. And this time, the green ping pong ball also represents God. And I'm gonna get the same amount of rice. It's a half a cup, okay? But this time, I'm going to let all these distractions, all these other things go first. Let me put this here so I don't make a mess. Okay. All those things consume all my time. They fill up the cup. And when I try to put God in there, it doesn't work as good, does it? Because I'm trying to smush God in there after all my other things. I'm not making God the most important. So I hope that this will remind you and each of all of us watching that to always put God in our lives first, to make him the most important, not try to cram him in at the last minute, um, not try to squeeze him in after we've already made all our decisions and choices, but instead to pray to God, to ask God to be first in our lives. Okay. Now, are you ready? If we aren't worshiping God and putting him first in our hearts, then what are we worshiping? What are some of those things that we make so much more important in our lives than God? Do y'all have any ideas? Okay, those are good ideas. Let's go through some of them together. There's really no wrong answer here. There's so many things that would apply. Okay, so for example, let's say we make our schoolwork or our homework more important than God, making good grades where we don't have time to read our Bible or study or go to church because we've got to study up for school so much that school becomes more important than God. Sometimes making those good grades becomes more important than having good in our hearts, okay? Um, sometimes we care more about money than God. Maybe working so hard um, that we don't have time for God or time for family. Um, we don't have time to go to church because we're trying to make money. Sometimes we make money an idol. Okay, we're making it God not first. Money is coming first. Maybe sometimes working out. Okay. 
or doing a sport like fishing. We put that before God instead of going to church or studying or praying, working out, going fishing. Ooh, can't go to church. Got to go fishing. Okay. Maybe that's something we're doing. Maybe we want to read our favorite book instead of read the Bible. Maybe that's becoming more important to us. Okay. Maybe, what else have I got? Maybe we want to check Facebook out or play on our phone. We don't have time to do anything for God because we're so busy on our phone. Even you little guys out there, sometimes little kids have phones or playing on phones all day and they're only little. Watch that. Okay. Maybe we want to play our video games. Oh, I don't even know how to turn this one on. There we go. So maybe we want to play video games and um, watch, uh, play video games and watch TV more than we want to um, study or learn about God or read our Bible or go to church or even do things over our family because we're so distracted. All of these things are good. Exercise is good. Sports is good. Our phone is good. Reading is good. Money is good. All of those things are important. I'm not saying that you got to get rid of them. I'm just saying that we got to make sure we balance, that we don't put those things in, in before God, that we don't try to do all those other things and then cram God in at the last minute, okay? Nothing is more important than having a relationship with God. Now, what are some things you can do to have a better relationship with God? All of us, me included. What are some things we can do? Well, we can go to Sunday school when it reopens, go to kids' church when it reopens. Um, we can read our Bible. We can pray. And you know what else? We can treat others kindly. When we do all of those things, then that shows that we're putting God first in our lives. Okay? So remember that, kids. It's very important. That's what our first commandment is. Put God first, not all those other things that are always around us to distract us. So kids, this week our memory verse is very simple. It's the first commandment. What is it? Put God first. And you can hold up a big one, a big one finger, meaning first. God is first. Put God first. First, very important, okay? And remember, what did I tell you was good to help you do that? Remember to pray, remember to read your Bible, talk about God with your family at the dinner table when you're eating, and treat others kindly. Okay, let's go ahead and pray, guys. Heavenly Father, dear Lord, I thank you for all the children that are watching Kids Church today. And Lord, I ask that you would help us to remember, God, to put you first. To remember not to put all those other things before you. To actually worship them instead of you. Lord, I just ask that the children would have a deeper relationship with you as they learn these commandments. That they would just draw closer to you. Have you living in their hearts and realize that you are so important. And that you don't give them laws or rules or commandments to restrict them and to keep them from doing things. But instead to keep them safe and to protect them. Heavenly Father, we love you and we praise you in your precious name. Amen. Now kids, remember... Put God first. See, do not have any other gods before me. Don't put sports before God. Don't put the TV before God. Don't put even your school or famous people or things you like to do playing before God. Remember that God is the center. And all those other things, when you put God in the center, will be close to you and be fun and bless your life. But don't let them become more important than God. Okay, guys, you have a great day, and I'll see you soon. Bye.